Hello, need aspirants. So I hope you all are doing great. So welcome or welcome back to this channel. Myself Madhu Yadav, and I am a senior lecturer for zoology at Sri Chaitanya Goshala. So I am going to discuss today some important questions and some important concepts along with the questions of the chapter excretory products and their elimination. I have already taken two lectures from this. chapter and i have explained structure of kidney structure of nephron in the one lecture another lecture i have explained the urine formation right so you can watch them if you have not watched till now and now let us discuss some of the questions without any delay so let us see the very first question that is erythropoietin hormone which stimulates rbc formation is produced by so the answer would be what will be the answer for this question the answer will be the very first option juxta glomerular cells of the kidney do you know what are these juxta glomerular cells what are these juxta glomerular cells in short we can call them jg cells so let me introduce you to these jg cells these are the part of one apparatus that is known as juxta glomerular apparatus what is this juxta glomerular apparatus juxta glomerular apparatus juxta glomerular apparatus so if you know about the structure of nephron in the structure of nephron we have talked about we have talked about glomerulus yes or no we have talked about glomerulus then we have talked about bowman's capsule pct loop of henle dct here we will be talking about dct and we will be talking about the afferent arteriole what is this afferent arteriole this afferent arteriole when it is coming into the bowman's capsule then only it is making the glomerulus so here basically two things are there one is afferent arteriole and one is dct at some point they two are coming in contact these two these two are coming in contact these two are coming in contact when they are coming in contact then at the point of contact the cells of afferent arteriole will be modified and the cells of dct will also be modified and at the time at the point of contact the cells of afferent arteriole will be called as will be forming jg cells and the dct cells will be forming macula densa cells macula densa cells so in the juxta glomerular apparatus there are two things one is jg cells and one is macula densa cells they have different functions let me tell you briefly the function of the macula densa cell whenever there is decreased salt concentration in the glomerular filtrate then it is sensed by macula densa and the macula densa will be giving signal to the jg cell and then jg cell then jg cell will be secreting renin and this renin will be starting one mechanism that is known as ras i will explain you the ras mechanism in the next question but here let us understand these jg cells now you understood jg cells are nothing but the cells of afferent arteriole only where these jg cells are getting formed in the afferent arteriole at the point of contact with dct afferent arteriole and dct are coming in contact so cellular modifications are happening in the afferent arteriole and mac and dct in the afferent arteriole the cells are now known as jg cells at the point of contact and the cells of dct are now known as macula densa cells at the point of contact right so these jg cells apart from secreting renin they also secrete they also secrete the erythropoietin hormone and that is why the answer of this question will be the first option juxta glomerular cells of the kidney what is their function their function is to stimulate rbc production in the body this will not be the answer because alpha cells of pancreas they secrete what they secrete glucagon 
adenohypophysis is a different uh, part which is coming in the you know chemical coordination and integration chapter the cells of bone marrow they also don't secrete this erythropoietin the adenohypophysis also don't secrete the erythropoietin the bone marrow in the bone marrow what will happen in the bone marrow the rbc will be formed in the bone marrow right but the erythropoietin hormone will be secreted by the jg cells i hope you have understood this question so you have to remember erythropoietin is produced by which cells of the kidney jg cells of the kidney now coming to the next question that is which of the following would help in prevention of diuresis what is diuresis 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 is water loss water loss through what water loss so diuresis is water loss through the urine beta water loss through the urine water loss through urine this is the meaning of diuresis here we want to prevent the diuresis we don't want that water will be lost along with our urine because if water will be lost if huge water loss will occur then our body will feel dehydrated right so that is not good for the body so who will prevent this so let us see the options reabsorption of sodium very important reabsorption of sodium if reabsorption will occur then sodium is going to come back into the blood from the glomerular filtrate it is going into the blood if salt will come then along with salt passively the water will also come right so sodium and water from renal tubules due to aldosterone due to what due to aldosterone so i have told you jg cells are going to secrete what jg cells are going to secrete renin renin is going to start what renin is going to start this mechanism ras renin angiotensin aldosterone system what is the meaning of a here a means angiotensin angiotensin how this angiotensin is formed it is formed from angiotensin 1 so basically this is angiotensin 1 going to form angiotensin 2 and this angiotensin 1 how it is going to be formed it is going to be formed from angiotensinogen which comes from the liver angiotensinogen is converted into angiotensin 1 by renin this is the function of this renin and that is how it is starting this mechanism so what is the function of this angiotensin 2 it acts as a vasoconstrictor if it acts as a vasoconstrictor then it will increase the blood pressure if it will increase the blood pressure then what will happen it it is going to increase the glomerular filtration rate right and it is also going to give signal to pct it gives signal to pct for reabsorption for reabsorption as you know pct from pct maximum reabsorption will occur maximum reabsorption occurs through the pct right because in the pct you know brush bordered cuboidal epithelium is present so more surface area more reabsorption when more reabsorption then then now what is going to happen more reabsorption of sodium will occur more reabsorption of water will occur now after that after that this angio this angiotensin 2 is going to stimulate it will also stimulate it will also stimulate adrenal gland which what part of adrenal gland adrenal cortex from the adrenal cortex aldosterone is going to be released aldosterone is going to stimulate salt reabsorption or you can say sodium reabsorption sodium reabsorption it is going to stimulate sodium reabsorption or salt reabsorption now so sodium will be reabsorbed then this angiotensin 2 has one more function it is going to stimulate it is going to stimulate 
release of one more hormone that is known as ADH. ADH or it is known as vasopressin. It is a hypothalamic hormone. It is produced by hypothalamus. It is a hypothalamic hormone. But it is released from, stimulate release of ADH, release of ADH from posterior pituitary, from posterior pituitary. Because you know this hormone, there are two hypothalamic hormones which are not releasing or inhibiting hormones, they will come into the posterior pituitary, they will get stored there and they will be released from there. So, the signal will go to the posterior pituitary that release them and hypo to hypothalamus also the signal will go to produce it, right. So, this ADH what it will do, this ADH or vasopressin what it will do, it is antidiuretic hormone, antidiuretic hormone. If it is antidiuretic hormone, then it will prevent diuresis. It will prevent diuresis. How it will prevent diuresis? By stimulating reabsorption of, by stimulating reabsorption of water. From where this water and from where this salt or sodium is getting reabsorbed? From the latter parts of the from the distal parts of the nephron, from the distal parts. What are the distal parts of the nephron? The distal parts are DCT, collecting duct. So, from there, conditional reabsorption is going to occur and the sodium and the water, they are going to be reabsorbed. If they will be reabsorbed, they will be coming into the blood. If they will be coming into the blood, then what will they increase? Reabsorption will increase renal blood flow. If it will increase renal blood flow, then there will be increase in renal plasma flow. If there is increase in renal plasma flow, then there will be increase in GFR, glomerular filtration rate and there will be prevention of this diuresis, right? So, reabsorption of sodium, reabsorption of water, simply reabsorption. Reabsorption means what? Reabsorption means th something is getting back to the blood. It is not going into the urine. That is reabsorption, right? So, reabsorption will prevent diuresis. The other things will not, uh, uh, will not be correct. ANF is secreted from the heart. It does not cause vasoconstriction. It is a vasodilator. It is a vasodilator, right? Renin secretion should be increased, it should not be decreased. So, this is wrong here. And more water reabsorption due to under secretion? No, not due to under secretion, due to hyper secretion, due to hyper secretion of ADH. So, the other three options are wrong, whereas the first option is the correct option. I hope you have understood this question. Let us begin with the another question. So, this is the another question which is a very very easy question based upon the structure of nephron and the types of nephron, right? So, you should be knowing that there are two types of nephron. One is cortical nephron and one is juxta medullary nephron. It is based upon their position in the cortex and medulla. See, few parts of the nephron will be present in the cortex and few parts will be present in the medulla, right? So, what are the parts? What are the parts? You should know that you should know that this is Bowman's capsule, then there will be PCT, then there will be loop of Henle, then there will be ascending limb of loop of Henle, then again DCT and then this DCT will open into the collecting duct. So, if I will tell you the Bowman's capsule, the, D, the PCT, the Bowman's capsule, the DCT, they are going to come into the cortex. They are going to come into the cortex and loop of Henle is going to come into the medulla. But in the cortical reaction, the loop of Henle is very, very reduced. It is not that long. It is short. It is reduced. Whereas in the juxta medullary nephrons, it is very, very long. So if it will be long, then it is known as medullary nephron, juxta medullary nephron. If the loop of Henle is short, then it will be known as cortical nephron. So, that let us see, let us read this question and let us answer the 
क्वेश्चन अजर्शन सेज नेफ्रॉन आर ऑफ टू टाइप्स कॉर्टिकल एंड जक्स्टा मेडुलरी बेस्ड ऑन देयर रिलेटिव पोजिशन इन कॉर्टेक्स एंड मेडुला एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट लेट अस सी द रीजन जक्स्टा मेडुलरी नेफ्रॉन हैव शॉर्ट लूप ऑफ हेनले व्हाट आई हैव टोल्ड यू जस्ट नाउ आई हैव टोल्ड यू एग्जैक्टली ऑपोजिट जक्स्टा मेडुलरी नेफ्रॉन्स हैव लॉन्ग लूप ऑफ हेनले दे डोंट हैव शॉर्ट लूप ऑफ हेनले वेयर एज कॉर्टिकल नेफ्रॉन्स हैव शॉर्ट लूप ऑफ हेनले so this is the problem here so if this is the problem then it is going to be false if this is false then your answer will be your answer will be third option a is true assertion is true whereas reason is false Let's start the another question that is use of an artificial kidney during hemodialysis may result in okay what is artificial kidney and what is the use of artificial kidney so you must have uh you must have heard of kidney failure when the kidney will fail then the body will not be able to eliminate the excretory waste that is urea right so we will use the artificial kidney or dialyzing unit right and uh, we will pass the blood of the patient through that dialyzing unit or artificial kidney so that the excretory product will be removed that process is known as hemodialysis right so use of an artificial kidney during hemodialysis may result in nitrogenous waste build up in the body no because if we will use artificial kidney it will eliminate the artificial kidney will eliminate the nitrogenous waste it will eliminate it will eliminate nitrogenous waste it will also eliminate excess of potassium ions so it is also wrong to say non elimination of excess of potassium ions artificial kidney will eliminate excess of urea excess of potassium ions as well c is reduced absorption of calcium ions from gastrointestinal tract absolutely correct because our kidney natural kidney is secreting again one hormone that is known as calcitriol the kidney is secreting this hormone that is known as calcitriol and this calcitriol is going to increase is going to increase is going to increase the absorption of calcium ions from the git from the digestive tract from the gastrointestinal tract so you have to remember if artificial kidney will be there it is not going to it is not going to increase the calcium ion absorption so there will be reduced calcium ion absorption right reduced absorption of calcium ion this is absolutely correct artificial kidney cannot do that so there will be reduced absorption in the body and also just now in the first question we have talked about jg cells of kidney are going to produce which hormone erythropoietin erythropoietin so erythropoietin hormone this erythropoietin hormone is is what it is doing it is stimulating rbc production in the body if artificial kidney will be there it is not going to be produced if it is not going to be produced then rbc production will be also reduced or decreased so both of these are correct use of an artificial kidney during hemodialysis may result in reduced absorption of calcium and reduced absorption of rbc production so your answer will be third option i hope you have understood all these important questions and concepts so stay tuned for more important concepts and questions thank you everyone